All right, this is John Leak with Historic Homeworks, and I've got all my sash painting brushes out because I'm going to try something new. I really like this one. I've had it for 30 or 40 years. Nice black china bristles. It's uh, set on an angle. And it says here on the protective sleeve that came with it, advanced construction features. Number one, tapered and chiseled for finest paint finish and control. Okay, this taper is each bristle is tapered from thick to thin and it's chisel shaped along the edge here. And then of course it's a sash brush so the it's set on an angle, sometimes called an angled sash brush. You might know that paint brushes are made in three different ways. One is with a chisel edge where the bristles are packed into the ferrule in a way that makes a chisel shape along the edge of the bristles. Like that. Another way they're made is with a blunt edge along the ends of the bristles and square edge. So with this brush you can see well it's not really chisel shaped. Over the decades it's worn down. The chisel point has worn off. It's more like this blunt edge here. So this brush is a uh, china bristle and it's just about a year old, less than a year old and it was made with this blunt edge, kind of a rounded shape along the edge like this. So, and this, this white china bristle is a little more flexible. It makes a softer brush, which I think is better for uh, painting the uh, skinned over glazing putty than the stiffer bristle uh, of the black bristles. That makes kind of a stiff brush, more likely to damage the skinned over putty. So I really like this one, but I'm going to adapt it. And one of the things I'm going to do is make it from a blunt edge to a square edge. And also, you might know that uh, each of the individual bristles are, fl are flagged, it's called. They're split. It's like split ends. So as each bristle ends it it divides out into two or three or four filaments instead of just tapering to uh, a single end. Let's just take a close look at that. I've got a little magnifier here and I'll just try and show you that if I can. I'll just spread out a few bristles here and we'll just try and take a close look. I think I can do this and show you what that looks like. You might be able to see that now. Each of those little bristles divides out into two or three thin filaments. So what I'm going to do is try and adapt this brush so that it'll be easier and faster to uh, paint glazed sash. I'm going to change it from blunt to flat edge and I'm going to take off the uh, flagged split ends so it's just a single hair ending in it with a slight taper. Now how am I going to do that? Well I thought I'd just hack that off with a pair of scissors. Be pretty slick and quick but it could end up being uneven and uh, it'll make each end of the each one of those bristles kind of sharp and irregular 
and I want them all kind of smoothly rounded and tapered. So what I'm going to do is sand them off here on the belt sander. And to do that, I'm going to pack this brush in between a couple of thin pieces of wood to use as guides, like that. And just leave the bristles sticking out a little bit and then run that on the belt sander like that and just sand the, the ends of those bristles off of there. I think that's going to work. I have to just uh, pack that together with a couple of clamps and rubber bands. Okay, now you can see I've got those all packed together, kind of like a sandwich, the paintbrush trimming sandwich. And I've made these two little boards so that they're just as wide as the paintbrush is. And uh, that's worked out well. And I've cut them on the angle that I want here. And um, just packed them together. And I've added a rubber band here just to keep the bristles aligned and straight within the two boards. Like that. And the bristles are just sticking out as much as I want to trim off. Here, that's just about a quarter of an inch. That'll trim out that rounded edge and also most or all of the flagged ends. All right, so I'm just gonna do that here at the belt sander and set it on like that. Maybe like that, I guess like this. I'll set it like that and grind that off. Okay, that came out real nice. Nice and flat across this way. And nice and flat across this way. So, oh, I just noticed there's, of course, there's a little dust in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the camera, but there's a little dust coming out as I flip that. So I think I'll uh, be sure and clean that good before I use it with paint. But you can see here, it's nice and straight across this way, and nice and straight across th this way, just like square edge cut and it's on the angle and I guess this would also give you the opportunity if you wanted to to adjust that angle for you know if you wanted it a little more or a little less to suit your particular needs or the way you like to work so and I've also taken off all the flagged ends and they're uh, slightly tapered and rounded the ends of the bristles are slightly tapered and, and rounded and my theory on that is that that'll let the paint flow out of the brush a little more freely, which might speed up the work. And I'll show you the advantage when we're at the sash painting that this square edge gives when you're brushing the, uh, lapping the paint over onto the glass a little bit. We'll see how that works when we're painting. All right, so that's my improved sash brush. I like it. All right, I'm set up with a sash that's been glazed and the putty is skinned over and it's ready for painting. 
and I've got my tuned up sash painting brush that I've trimmed the bristles so that they're square edged forming a flat surface. All the ends of the bristles form a flat surface. The idea is that that flat surface will go right onto and parallel with the tooled surface of the putty and the bristles with no flags will release their paint onto the surface of the putty faster. So this should be, you know, help speed up the sash painting. And another advantage is that where this surface is 90 degrees to this surface, it shows a row of bristles, right? This outer row of bristles. And you can see there's a, a few stray bristles. There always are on a paintbrush that stick out. So as I bring the end of the bristles onto the putty, the angle formed by the glass and the putty tends to hold those bristles right in alignment along the edge of the glass, like that. So we'll see how that works. I'll just get that paint started flowing out of the brush and then settle those bristles right in on the putty. So that's working pretty nice. Could have loaded a little more paint into the brush, I think. So that's pretty good. Paint's just lapped over onto the glass of bare sixteenth. I think a little more paint in the brush will help. This is the first stroke of the day, so the bristles might not be completely loaded up. So that's working pretty nice. Now, I think you can really see now there's a whole row of bristles, 100 or 200 bristles that are putting that paint right on the edge of the glass. Yeah, I think this is worth further use. Try it out on a couple of sash and see how it goes.
All right, so that's uh, using the square cut brush makes the painting go a little faster for me anyway. I think it's worth doing. Square cut.